the winners round six. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump into this match between Donald and Nick and see for Lee's sake if maybe a Moltres will be jumping out into the battle. It's going to be Rachel and Beauty out on Nick's side of the field, whereas on Donald's side, he's going to be bringing Glastria and Grimmsnarl. So Glastria on the field once again. Yeah, really interesting lead here with the, the Glastria. Normally a Pokemon like we saw in that first game with, with Wolf that we see it normally paired with the Dusclops. But here we're seeing a, a slightly different uh, lead here with the Grimmsnarl coming out onto the field. So that is, it's going to be interesting to see if it's screen support or just a regular kind of fake out support here. It'll be interesting to see how this first turn opens for both players. Well, I mean, you've got two Pokemon that can get up to a lot of tricks. You know, Grimmsnarl on Donald's side and that Comfy on Nick's side. You know, both Pokemon known as great supportive roles. They can really throw a few hazards into the opposing Pokemon strategy. Um, but straight away, there's going to be a Dynamax Glastria on the field here for Donald. So just wanting to make sure that his Pokemon gets his double HP stat and he can start really applying a lot of pressure. This is quite a bold thing to do in front of that Rotom Heat. Comfy going to go for that Draining Kiss, going to deal some damage to that opposing Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl does a decent chunk thanks to it being super effective as Grimmsnarl sets up the light screen. So going to protect the Glastria from any of those sp um, special attacking moves from the Rotom. But the Rotom here is deciding to play Donald at his own game and says, hey, if you want to set up a light screen, I'm going to boost my special attack moves by going for a nasty plot as Glastria goes for the max hailstorm. It is going to go into that Confei, of course, setting the hail at the end of the turn as well. Even if it was a focus ash, it would be KO'd by that additional bit of chip. Uh, but it looks like that was just a straight one. One hit KO into the Comfy, just removing it so Nick no longer has access to that Pokemon to be able to cause some disruption. And critically for Donald, Glastria's chilling they activates and it gets an attack boost as well. Yeah, very interesting first turn there. Unfortunate for Nick to lose the Comfy. It hasn't really had the chance to do very much in this game. But at the same time, really nice play to get the Rotom up with that nasty pot and after the light screen which you maybe suspect from Grimmsnarl very known to put up screens to protect a partnering Pokemon in an incredible position now to potentially go for a Dynamax and get those Max Flares off into the Glastria which is going to be able to do a lot of damage. Glastria is one of those Pokemon it's very good but it does struggle a little bit against Rotom Heat. It doesn't really have the attacks to damage it heavily. We did see if it's obviously not Dynamax how good it was in our game 1 against Wolf and Alex when he switched in that Rotom. We saw how much damage it can do but that changes if you do go for the dynamax here you've got the nasty plot over for your nick i would imagine we may see a dynamax rotom come out this turn well, Nick going on to the offensive here, going to be Dynamaxing up his own Pokemon as well. And like you said, Lee, really wouldn't be surprised to see this being the Rotom, particularly with that nasty plot, nasty plot boost. It doesn't want to be taking an early KO, it wants to be able to utilize the boost that it's gotten. I mean, it sounds tremendous in its cry when it goes into that Dynamax. It is so ready for this winner's round six, game one. Um, Rotom is going to go for that Max Flare. So not only going to be dealing good damage to the opposing Grimstone here, actually able to pick up the KO, it's also going to reset the weather, going to bring the sun onto the field remove the hail and now critically boost up those fire type moves in the next turn as well so if you are the glastria you need to be a little bit concerned if you're not resetting the weather and it's not it's going for that max knuckle actually so going to try and boost up the attack even further going into that stack attack and now this is going to be so many boosts for this glastria not only gets the critical hit it's going to get an attack boost from the fact that it was a max knuckle and our stack attacker has fainted chilling nay is going to activate again and this will now put this glastria at plus three attack yeah, this is huge for the Glastria on plus three now with those chilling nays. And it's attack after attack. It's very quick fire here from both sides of the field, you know. Both players going all offense, really. Not something, no conservative play here, just going all out attack. And it's interesting now, Donald able to get the Dusclops on the field. So he does have access to that trick room that can support that Glastria very well. Potentially go for a max guard here and then take it from there if he can get the trick room up. Well, Rillaboom, a familiar face from Players' Cup 1, is here in Players' Cup 2, and it's in an awkward position where we know Rillaboom likes to normally go for something like a fake out, but with a Dynamax Pokemon and a Ghost type on the opposing side of the field, not going to be an option. But instead, going for that taunt into the Dusclops, so it cannot get up to any kind of shenanigans, no trick room here. Rotom going to go for that Max Flare, and it's in the Sunshine as well. So going into that Glastria, it's actually oh. able to pick up a KO despite the light screen boost just showing how devastating the sort of physical, or oh, say the special output of that Rotom is, you know, it's got its plus two boost, it's in the sunshine, and Dusclops has had its trick room shut down as well. Yeah, really nice play there from Nick, you know, shutting down that trick room 
taunt not really a commonly used move that you see on something like Rillaboom but a very nice option there and denying that trick room which could have been so problematic and also Nick making a nice play not wanting to take a chance there's nothing to risk there for going for the Glastria if they don't see a max guard then you remove it from the field so like I say no risk there going for that and with the sun boosting these max flares it's no wonder it's taking it down even behind that light screen just too much for the Glastria to deal with and then the Amoongus coming on the field and also not a Pokemon that really likes staring down at a Rotom heat too often. I mean the thing is when you have a little look at Donald's team here it it all sort of struggles against that Rotom. Um, you know, the Glastria doesn't want to take fire type moves, nor does this Amoongus that's joined the field, and Dusclops taking a huge chunk of damage from this Rillaboom that's obviously in its grassy terrain as well. That's going to be boosting up the damage output. Max Flare coming out from the Rotom, actually going to go straight down into that Dusclops and just move from the field, meaning that Donald is down to his last remaining Pokemon here with the Amoongus, going for that Sludge Bomb straight into the Rillaboom, dealing super effective damage, but not enough to pick up the KO, but is enough to get the poison. So just going be putting that little bit of a time on Rillaboom that's going to help itself out from the grassy terrain as well. Um, but of course, Amoongus here, not necessarily the biggest powerhouse against something like the Rotom. Even though Rotom's Dynamax turns are over, I think it used them pretty successfully, Lee very successfully and I think uh, maybe a knockout nearly every turn there from Nick once he did Dynamax it after getting that nasty plot up was very very beneficial of those max turns that's how you want to be using your Dynamax Pokemon but like I say Donald's got a pretty hard time against this team he doesn't really have a way to deal very well with the Rotom and I think that's something that he will be thinking about going into game two already he's not in the best position here obviously with the Amoongus one of the slowest Pokemon in the format gonna really struggle in any situation <laughs> to deal with Rotom Heat and a Rillaboom so no surprise there that we do see the game wrap up from the Rillaboom and Rotom on Nick's side of the field. I mean that Rotom was just an absolute monster it comes onto the field goes for that nasty plot turn one and then just goes into Dynamax mode and just starts steamrolling through Donald's team and actually when you take a little look at the breakdown of his full six Pokemon you've got Tappy Finny, Moltres, uh, Glastria, Amoongus, Dusclops and Grimmsnarl there's not a lot of Pokemon there that can apply a lot of pressure to that Rotom heat like you know sure Tappy Finny can counteract from sort of the the fire move perspective but the electric type moves that Rotom likes to carry as well are going to hurt Tappy Finny in return so it's quite a difficult situation there for Donald to be able to adjust and I think critically from him he needs to be able to find a way to remove that Rotom before it gets that nasty plot boost and before it's able to die in max. Yeah and, and you talk about dealing with the Rotom Heat the, the Tapu Fini would make a lot of sense in this situation but then you talk about the electric types <laughs> and then you also look at Nick's side of the field and he's also got access to a Rillaboom as well which just makes it even more difficult to bring the Tapu Fini especially if they can manipulate the terrain and, and control that grassy terrain to make sure that you've got grassy glide so whatever your trick room situation is or not then it doesn't really matter because that's going to be a priority attack and doing a lot of damage so very difficult but I think the one thing that you would maybe think about approaching this next game is prioritizing getting your trick room we saw in that mm -hmm. first game that went with the grim snarl and went for the screen side support then it, it did allow nick into the game with that nasty plot to take advantage of that that setup from the down side of the field and maybe that's not the way you want to approach this maybe you want to go for the trick room get that speed control mm -hmm. advantage because that is going to be pivotal especially if glastria is the pokemon that you're going to be relying on heavily you want it in a situation you've also got raw to um, amoongus that could come in as well now if you get the trick room up with Dusclops, you get Glastria and maybe Amoongus on the field. You can see that pairing do a lot of work. So that's something probably both players are thinking about possibly going into this next game. And it'll be interesting to see how maybe they both react to that first game and how it played out. Well, let's take a look, shall we? Let's jump into game two and see how Donald is going to be able to adjust to try and take down the force of Nick's Rotom. You know, that you mentioned that Amoongus, maybe it's going to go for some kind of spores, but it needs to be in the environment, that trick room environment that it wants to be in. And no changes from Nick here. It's going to be the Rotom and the Confei. They've just switched sides and delightful. We have got the Galarian Moltres and the Grimmsnarl out on the field. Yeah, it was nice to see this Galarian Moltres finally here. One of these new Pokemon <laughs> hit the field. And it'll be interesting to see if it can do very much to this Rotom. You know, like, it's it's a good Pokemon, but it's still threatened by those electric type attacks that the Rotom can throw out. Maybe with the Grimmsnarl support this time, do you allow the Rotom to get the nasty plot up? If you've got maybe Fake out there, it's not the most commonly run move on the Grimmsnarl, but it would be an option to potentially shut down the Rotom for a turn while you could maybe set up with your Moltres and, and go from there. But definitely the 
Rotom is going to be hot on the press of things for Donald to deal with going into this first turn. Well, Grim Snarl kind of doing what it did last time. Took the Draining Kiss and goes for a light screen here just to protect Donald's side of the field. And Moltres this time going for the Nasty Plot. So just wanting to set itself up, boosting um, its attack, special attack here. And Rotom doing the exact same. It's kind of like, you know, what you can do, I can do as well. And I think this is both our trainers potentially setting up for their Dynamax Pokemon. You know, if this Moltres is carrying something like a weakness policy, then it might want to take an electric type attack, but probably not one from a plus two Rotom. No, definitely not from a plus two Rotom. I mean, the light screen support is going to be beneficial here. And the other thing that Moltres has going for it, it does have a huge special defense stat. So if it's trained heavily in that area defensively, then maybe it can take a big attack from this Rotom. Now, the thing that we noticed there from that turn one was that the Moltres actually outsped the Rotom. So it is going to be able to get an attack off before the Rotom is able to move. Now, if you've got enough to take it down after a nasty plot, that will be pivotal for Donald here. And like we mentioned before we came into this game the Rotom is the biggest threat for Donald to deal with so making that a priority number one is a good place to start exactly well Nick doing exactly uh, almost turn by turn what happened in that game one going for the Dynamax here up on the Rotom and no Dynamax coming out from Donald instead going for a null and nasty plot on this Moltres <laughs> really trying to boost up its special attack so that if it is allowed to attack it's going to pick up that KO and the target of the Rotom is actually the Grimstar going for that Max Flare so going to be able to pick up the KO nice and easily thanks to the nasty plot boost and now setting the sun so those Max Flares are going to be dealing even more damage going into the next Turn. It's quite a nice way for Nick to kind of negate the um, the, the light screen that went up previously. But Confei going for the Trick Room. And as you mentioned, Lee, that Moltres was faster than the Rotom. It's now going to be in a really precarious situation against the Rotom. It's going to be in an environment it prefers. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult going into this turn if you're Donald, but a very risky play there going for that additional nasty plot. Now sitting on plus four. Now it's probably got the ability to actually knock out the Rotom if it does Dynamax <laughs> here, but it's a question to whether or not we can see it survive a turn from the Rotom. Like you say, maybe you want to use your Dusclops to try and reverse the Trick Room, but it's a very... It's, it's a complicated mind game here. Do you go for the Trick Room hoping to, to reverse it or does the Confi sit on the field and go for the Trick Room as well to reverse your Trick Room that you're trying to reverse the original Trick Room? It's very complicated. <laughs> oh, so many Trick Room mind games right now, Lee. It, it's got to be so difficult and you can see the timer coming out there for the last 10 seconds. These players really are, I think, having to act on their gut and trying to read their opponent as well for what they're going to do so they can react accordingly. Um, Donald is actually going to Dynamax here and, of course, it's going to be that Moltres. You know, we don't often see a Dynamax Dusclops um, and with all of those boosts uh, that's what Moltres wants to make the advantage of but I wonder if Donald here has gone for an offensive move or maybe trying to go for something like that Max Guard so it doesn't have to take any damage in Trick Room allowing Dusclops to be able to reverse it on its accord. Um, Confei going for the Helping Hand there's going to be no Max Guards here this Rotom is going to be powerful plus two in Sun Helping Hand boost of Max Flare targeting down into that Moltres it is able to hang on though and the Berserk ability wow. Wow, boosting its special attack as it has gone below 50 HP. Moltres surviving, going for that max airstream into the opposing config. Very, very easy KO. And if this Dustlops has gone for that trick room, which it looks like it has because it hasn't moved yet, it's going to be putting Moltres at such an advantage going into the next turn. It's also got a speed boost on there. So whatever Pokemon Nick now brings in from the back, Moltres has a slight advantage on it. Wow, what 100%, a turn. Hundred percent, and a really what what a, an incredible turn there from both players. You know, Nick going and getting the attack off into the Moltres, but you can see how pivotal that light screen was earlier, set by the Grim Snarl. Now the Moltres coming to full effect after getting that airstream and the Dusclops doing its job perfectly with that, reversing the Trick Room and turning the dimensions back to normal, making sure that that Moltres is in a fine position now to start maybe picking up the knockout on that Rotom. Maybe this is the turn to start doing it. Oh, I mean, that turn was so explosive. And Moltres now has to be careful. Um, it needs to make sure that it's able to pick up a solid KO. It doesn't maybe go into potential max guard on that Rotom, allowing Rillaboom to get off some good damage um, or something to that accord. You want to make sure, if you're Donald, that that Moltres is going to be able to deal the damage that you've set it up with those two nasty plots to be able to do. Um, of course, you have the speed advantage here. You could go for a super effective move into that Rillaboom, going for something like the max airstream, or you can try and target down the Rotom. But it's going to be difficult to call. Is there going to be a max guard lead? I would assume so, but it only delays it so much. But we aren't actually seeing a Max Guard at all. 
No, it's going to be the Grassy Glide going into Moltres, but able to survive thanks to um, the, sort of the bulk on that Moltres and goes into the Rotom, oh. able to pick up the solid KO. If you're Donald, you have just got rid of the scariest thing on the opposing side of the field. Um, and of course, the special defense going to drop on that Rillaboom as well. That could help out Donald later on as the game goes on. Dusclops going to go for that Pain Split, actually doing a self Pain oh. Split. How kind of the Dusclops here to boost up the HP of that Moltres. You know, Dusclops, such a bulky Pokemon. It's able to give a little bit of its HP to its partner, so it's got that longevity on the field. You know, another Grassy Glide isn't going to worry this Moltres at all. That was an incredible play there. The, the, I was going into this next turn before the Dusclops moved, thinking, <laughs> okay, well, it's probably going to be in Grassy Glide range from that Rillaboom, seeing the, the damage that it did just a minute ago. But the Pain Split is an incredible play, making sure that the Moltres is able to stick around for at least one more turn and get the most out of these Dynamax turns. Now, the Rillaboom in an awkward position, of course, it is probably not carry and protect. They never really do, so it's an easy target for Donald to go into here. But maybe I oh, will we'll actually see him going after the Stack Attacker. Yeah, just picks up a solid one hit KO against that stack attacker and reducing the special defense of Rillaboom by another stage. But just critically, it's KO after KO here. And Rillaboom going for the wood hammer here, not going to be the grassy glide, naturally is able to pick up the KO with a critical hit as well. So a little bit of heartbreak here for Donald, but you know, that Rillaboom is the last remaining Pokemon of Nick's side. So depending on what Donald has in the back, the game may well not be over for him. We know that Dusclops, um, Dusclops isn't the most offensive Pokemon in the world, but it's going for these pain splits, regaining a little bit of HP. And we know that they love to carry something like Nightshade. So it could just keep chipping away at this Rillaboom. And Rillaboom not known for having sort of multiple target moves. So it can only really hit one of Donald's Pokemon at a time. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think now you've removed the stack attacker from the field on Nick's side, you can quite freely maybe set up your own trick room to support what is actually coming in as the Glastria, which is going to have a really easy time in that trick room environment against the Rillaboom. Now, the grassy terrain is set up, so you have to be a little bit careful around what you do, but I think here Donald has played incredibly well to shut down what was that huge threat from game one in the, the Rotom Heat, and using that Moltres to such good, uh, you know just an incredible way to to bring it and utilize it as a pokemon well huge damage coming out from the wood hammer obviously in the terrain as well into that glastria that's able to go for a close combat into the rillaboom rillaboom of course dealing so much damage to itself as well in recoil gets a critical hit with the glastria meaning that donald has now leveled the playing field it is one game apiece and lee we are going to be jumping into a game three I'm very excited for this game three. <laughs> Extremely excited. This this game so far has been incredible. Now we saw how, you know, Nick game one really dominated with that Rotom Heat, how powerful it was and how much of a threat it was to Donald going into that that first mm -hmm. game. It was very hard for him to handle and we said he needs to react to that going into game two and he did just that and he did it in the probably most unexpected way because I think with the Moltres, it's not really the thing that you probably would rely on most to deal with an electric threat. Definitely mm -hmm. not. But getting that second nasty plot off and then positioning himself with the Dust Clubs to reverse the Trick Room while going for that combination of the Airstream to get the speed boost going into the next turn was just incredible. And then that Pain Split turn as well. I mean, that was just an incredible turn after an incredible turn. A really nice way to see Moltres used in this new <laughs> format and uh, dealing with the, the Rotom in such an easy fashion after those two nasty pop boosts, which is just crazy. <laughs> I can literally see how happy you are. Like, we, we kind of bigged up Moltres <laughs> And we're like, we've got really high hopes for you. Please don't let us down. And it certainly didn't in that game too. And, you know, it's always quite risky when you see a Pokemon trainer doubling up on a boosting move. So nasty plot number one goes off. Okay, cool. We can see the strategy you're going for here. Wait, that, that's a null and nasty plot. Like that, it's so intense at that stage because it is very much high risk, high reward. And the Moltres was leaving itself so exposed from um, a potential electric type move from that Rotom. You know, something like a Max Lightning going into that slot would have done a huge chunk of damage. Um, but again, Moltres was able to showcase not only that kind of um, bulk that it has, uh, but also its Berserk ability came into really great effect once it took all of that damage from the Rotom. Yeah, putting it onto plus five in the end, I think it was, wasn't it? And just being <laughs> well, yes. able to... <laughs> wipe away Rotom Heat quite easily, which was just an just surprising, well, not surprising because of obviously plus five, it's a, a huge attack stat at that point, but <laughs> really, really huge, huge props to, to Donald to get it to that stage because like you say, it was very high risk, high reward going for that mm -hmm. nasty plot, that second one. The first one you can understand because you think, yeah. well, the Rotom goes for it, I'm gonna go for it, I'm gonna just keep up with the pace of the match here. But then, 
having, you know, mentality to go for another one in that really, really dangerous position where if he loses the Moltres, I would say nine times out of ten, he'd probably lose that game because then you're relying, like he did in game one, for Glastria to come in. Mm -hmm. You're relying on a trick room to go up and then is not really going to be able to do the damage to the Rotom and obviously at that point as well, I think the sun may have been set as well if it attacked with a, an overheat, uh, a max flare into mm -hmm. the Moltres to remove it from the field. So it, very dangerous, but it, it paid off in the end and it, it made for an incredible game and it wasn't oh, just... Yes. <laughs> a, a careless play, I don't think. I think it was very calculated thinking, if I get the second one off, I'm going to be in a great position, then we can go from getting the Dusclops in, remove the Comfy from the field, their speed control's gone, and then we can see what we can do from there. So, it was, yeah, it was very good and very. it made it very difficult for Nick. Um, mm -hmm. But Nick now knows what the big threat is going into this game. And I don't think going into game three is going to be as loose around not attacking the Moltres if we see it again. I don't think that Donald will be able to get away with it similar play in this game three but i guess we'll we'll soon find out lou yeah i mean our hearts are racing i can't imagine what the players are feeling going into this game three mm. so let's jump into the action and not let longer um so we can see exactly what's going to go down here and actually nick is going to change things up rosam's eye on the field once again we know it is kind of his hero pokemon but paired up with that mama swine glastria and grimmsnarl however going to jump out for donald and i can see some potential synergy happening from nick's side of the field here lee yeah, definitely. And uh, it's really nice to actually see the Mama Swine. Finally, another one of the Pokemon introduced in the Crown Tundra, and uh, it's, it's, it's been doing very well in the format so far. Interestingly, he's brought it here. It does kind of give you that bit extra firepower if the Moltres does come out. So I think if you are, Nick, you're going to have to preserve your Pokemon pretty carefully here to make sure when that Moltres, if it does come, you've got a way of dealing with it. And both these Pokemon and Nick's side of the field do a pretty good job of that. Let's think Glastria also has a few moves that it can go for to try and counteract that Mama Swine. But if you're Donald, you know already you cannot afford to leave that Rotom alone. It's just free to maybe go for something like the, the Nasty Plot. Yeah, it's gone, it's gone for a few of those. So it just can then start steamrolling through Donald's team. So he needs to make sure that he is calling his targeting correctly so that he's not putting himself at a disadvantage going forward into the match. And it is going to be the Dynamax Mama Swine here for Nick out on the field. So going to be applying a lot of pressure um, with some of the physical moves that it can bring to this game. Donald, of course, going to Dynamax up as well. Um, wouldn't be surprised to see this being the glass career in this occasion, um, just because we know that it can apply a lot of pressure to the Mama Swine with potentially um, sort of a fighting type move, getting the attack boost up on that glass career as well. Wouldn't be um, too problematic there for Donald so that he can start applying more pressure as the game goes on. Um, but I really kind of want to see what the Grimmsnarl is going to do here, whether or not it's just going to go again for setting up screens, and that's exactly what it does, just changes up the screen, this time going for the reflectors. It is facing down against that physical type Pokemon, the Mama Swine, that goes for the Max Quake. So this is targeting down into that Glastria. Does a small chunk of damage and boosting, of course, the special defense up on Nick's side of the field, potentially preparing for the Moltres that could be hiding in the back for Donald. Just wants to make sure the defenses are as strong as Nick can make it and revealing the life orb on there as well. Rotom, however, Lee, going to be going for what it's gone for every single turn one so far, going for that nasty plot. And if you are the Glastria, you have to be concerned about it. Glastria going to go for that Max Knuckle, though, targeting down into the Rotom, actually. Does over 50% damage and will now be getting the attack boost as well. So Nick now has to be the one careful about what this Glastria is going to do. He's got to find a way to take it down. Yeah, and he's got Pokemon on the field that can really threaten it. But if the Grimmsnarl now goes for a light screen, it's going to make it very difficult to pick up the knockout onto Glastria through a Reflect and a light screen. Now the Mammoth Swine there making a smart play, like you mentioned, getting that Max Quake off, preparing for potentially a Moltres that could be coming in threatening later on. But I wonder if Donald's actually brought the Moltres here. And maybe that bluff is kind of forcing Nick into some plays. And I think the advantage that Donald's got off here, the Rotom not maxing and getting that much damage off onto it, now it becomes way less of a threat and I think maybe the team from Donald's side of the field for Nick is easier to deal with without that Rotom we saw once it went down in game two it was a lot more straightforward to kind of get around the other Pokemon so getting that damage off early is very pivotal here for Donald to take an early lead. 
Rotom going for the Protect, of course. Nick can't Dynamax two Pokemon, so it needs to make sure it's protecting itself from that Sucker Punch as well, but the Grimmsnarl obviously not going to be connecting with a Pokemon protecting. Um, Grimmsnarl is going to have to take the Max Quake, however, does a really good chunk of damage to it. Not enough to pick up a KO, though, so Grimmsnarl will be around going into that next turn, maybe going to be trying to set up something like that Light Screen just to just to prevent kind of the damage that the Rotom can deal to the Glastria going forward. But speaking of Glastria, goes for the Max Knuckle into the Mammoth Swine. It is at plus one, but doesn't manage to pick up a KO. That's the thing with sort of the fighting type Max move. It's going to be capped at that sort of 90 base power. It can't deal as much damage as some of the other Max moves. So Mammoth Swine able to hang on. Yeah, and the interesting thing is here that we saw Donald reveal that Sucker Punch from the Grim Snarl. So it's plus two now as well. It's getting the benefits from these Max Knuckles from that Glastria. So it is going to be able to probably knock out the Mama Swine or the Rotom on Nick's side of the field whichever one it decides to target if it goes down that route so nick in a very awkward position here does he go for a nasty plot maybe with the rotom if he does that then he could get hit with a glastria another max knuckle here and the glastria on donald's side of the field doing exactly what glastria does <laughs> it hasn't got the trick room to support it but really in this situation with the screens it doesn't really feel like it needs it it's doing everything that uh, correctly here it's setting itself up and becoming a huge threat if it picks up a knockout in this next turn it's gonna be very very strong especially with that chilling near boost on top of the Max Knuckles. Well, Grimmsnarl this time connecting onto that Rotom. Um, we're going to be able to pick up the KO against it. Of course, the Max Knuckles boosting up the attack stat on that Grimmsnarl as well. So we knew it was really going to pack a punch with that Sucker Punch and removes the threat of the Rotom from that Glastria. Of course, going into the Max Guard, not going to be dealing any any damage there. But the thing is, the pressure that this Glastria is opposing right now is something that Nick has to worry about. Yeah, definitely. It was a nice way to max guard there, mitigate the potential damage that was coming out and the attack boost as well, which could make it even more threatening going into the next few turns. Now, we do see Relaboom come out onto the field. It does get its grassy terrain up. It has probably got access to fake out, so it can for at least one turn stop potentially Glastria that's not in its Dynamax form anymore or the Grim Snarl from setting up any further support or being disruptive. Exactly. Rillaboom probably in a better environment than it was in the previous game, but of course has to still worry about any potential ice type moves coming out from that Glastria, because um, they're certainly going to hurt, particularly at plus two. Um, Mamoswine looking in a little bit more of a precarious position here. You know, Sucker Punch easily going to be able to pick up the KO against it if it does choose to go for a move this turn. So Rillaboom might want to kind of help it out, go for the fake out into the Grim Snarl and stop that from happening, just so Mamoswine's able to deal out some good damage before it does fall victim to one of Donald's Pokemon. Yeah, the problem is if you go for the fake out, you kind of, and especially into the Grim Snarl to, to stop the Sucker Punch, you're kind of accepting that you're probably going to lose the Rillaboom, which might not be the best thing to do. And as we see, he's actually choosing not to stop the Grim Snarl, but go for the Glastria instead. Uh, going for the Ice Shard into the opposing Grimmsnarl there. As Grimmsnarl actually doesn't get for Sucker Punch at all, it's going for the Spirit Break into the Mamoswine to pick up the KO there. So Mamoswine is going to be removed from the field. And this does give Nick the opportunity to bring in his fourth and final Pokemon from the back. And depending on what it is, um, can apply some pressure to that opposing Glastria. Um, but of course, Glastria looking so strong. The Grassy Terrain as well is going to be helping with that HP, just regaining a little bit of damage with each turn. And it is going to be the Stack Attacker once again. And this time, Stack Attacker doesn't have to worry about that Moltres dealing a really big one-hit KO against it. Yeah, and it's very difficult. The mind games start now if you're Nick. Does the, do you allow the Grimmsnarl to go for a, snuck, a Sucker Punch into the Rillaboom? And can you survive that at plus two? Or do you fall into the trap like you did just before? We're not going to see that as we see. Actually, a Woodhammer come out from the Rillaboom and it's into the Glastria. So that Grimmsnarl is going to be able to attack here. Yeah, um, the Grim Snarl going for the Spirit Break into the Rillaboom, but Rillaboom not being able to pick up the KO against that Glastria that we know has a fighting type move. Um, going for that close combat into the Stack Attacker is already super effective, but at the plus two close combat as well, such a strong and powerful move. Just going to be able to take down that Stack Attacker in one hit. And of course, Chilling Ney is going to activate as well. And this Glastria going to be at plus three. And, you know, Rillaboom, there really wasn't a lot that it could do in that situation other than maybe try and get the critical hit and remove the Glastria from play. Yeah, and even at that stage, it's very difficult for the, just the, the lone Rillaboom to come back. I mean, you probably save your stack attacker at that point by getting rid of the Glastria, but very difficult position nonetheless. The Grimmsnarl uh, probably providing more pressure than the Glastria right now with the, the potential sucker punches, but Donald not going for that, going for these spirit breaks, which is kind of calling the bluff on whether or not you actually go for an attacking move to fall victim of them or not. 
Well, Grimmsnarl is going to fall victim to the Grassy Glide coming out from the Rillaboom, but Glastri are going to be able to follow up with a close combat and seal the game three for Donald and therefore the set. So Donald is going to be victorious over Nick in this winner's round nine. Round six even, sorry. <laughs> Getting so excited. <laughs> Not there yet, Lou. We've got plenty.